Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here with a nugget of wisdom. Listen, we are, we all know, even those of you who don't believe in God, we all know we're, we're in the last days. It's obvious. And uh, what I want to share with you is we have to really be on our P's and Q's because there are demonic forces out there. There are uh, powers that be that work in the realm of the dark side, so to speak. There's a demonic realm that is on a rampage in these last days. They're trying to take down as many as they can. Now, for those of you who don't believe, trust me, they're your enemy too. You may not know it. But as many as they could suck in and lure in, the end is going to be very ugly for whoever they fool. So for, for those of you who do believe, keep your garments clean. Keep your spiritual armor on. If you're not sure about all of that, because maybe you haven't been saved long, stay prayed up, stay in the word, and ask God to gird you up on the inside and to surround you with his guardian, warring, and ministering angels and those who are in the body who can keep you abreast as to what's going on. Because there are demonic forces that will use the enticements that have always worked on you to pull you down to pull you down and they'll use them again and again if you keep going for the okie doke again and again all right here's your warning now this is from a father warning his son now we're going to talk about in this particular one this is proverbs chapter seven now it's going to talk about wisdom understanding kinswoman sister strange woman stranger her house all of that it's all an allegory an allegory it is uh, an analogy it's it's symbolic the wisdom and understanding th that's what you have learned you keep it close in your bosom so that you don't walk around like a fool falling into every trap and every pitfall laying in front of you. Then the woman that flattereth, the strange woman, those are those luring enticements, those things that can cause us to self-destruct because of our weaknesses in those areas. You hear what I'm saying? All right. So I want you to really pay attention to what I'm saying because we don't always get what the Bible is warning us against. But I'm going to try to break it down so we are not caught off guard when things start going cuckoo. Now remember, we're in the last days. And there are people who stand in circles with pentagrams and all kind of crap in the middle, doing all kind of witchcraft and conjuring up and all kind of mess to pull as many down as possible. Don't be one of them. Listen to the warning. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live and my law as the apple of thine eye. You know, Pat, Pat's two cents. Cherish what I've taught you. Cherish the wisdom you've already gotten. Let them be your good sense. Don't leave them behind while you walk into the, the slaughterhouse to be killed. All right. I had to add a little drama, but you get my drift. Bind them upon thy fingers. Write them upon the table of your heart. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman that they may keep thee from 
the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. For at the window of my house I looked through my casement, and beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths a young woman, a young man, void of understanding. Yeah, passing through the street near her corner. And he went the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. Listen, listen, listen. If you are weak to gambling, what are you doing sitting up in a gambling joint? If you are fighting alcohol and you're trying not to get back on the wagon or fall off the wagon or whatever the term is, you're, you're trying to kick the habit of alcoholism. Why are you going to parties where they drink? Why are you sitting up at a bar? Why would you go to the liquor store, to the liquor section of a grocery store, or why would you even walk into a liquor store? I'm saying this to make you think. This is what he does in verse 8. He's passing through the street near her corner and he went the way to her house why I knew a man who was weak to pornography every time he turned around he was driving himself to a dance hall so he can watch the strippers now my question is you know that's your weakness what are you even doing near that corner? You get a job. You go and get a job as a hotel attendant, a clerk at a hotel that is notorious for the, uh, the prostitution nightlife. Why would you get a job there? The Bible says, make no provisions for the flesh. Okay. Let me go on. <laughs> now, he's passing through the street near her corner. And he went the way to her house. Duh. Okay, verse 9. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. Don't we like to do our stuff in the dark where we're hidden? Hmm? In the back, in the corner, in the dark. Yeah, yeah, we like doing that. That means we're hiding. That means you are being sneaky about your stuff. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle in heart. She is loud and stubborn, her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. Now you know that's a spirit realm. That's a demonic force. That's not one woman at every corner. Think now, think. It's a warning. You have to be very, very careful. You can't sit in the bar fighting alcoholism. You can't puff on a cigarette trying to stop smoking. Think about what I'm saying. You're weak to getting high. You always have this thing where you got to get high, whether it's crack, heroin, shooting up, snorting, smoking, whatever. Stay away from people that do. That's the wisdom that you're to take everywhere you go. Don't leave home without them. Wisdom. Understand where you are and where you're not and act accordingly. Wisdom. Too many demonic forces out here. 
for you to be playing tiddlywinks with them, playing tic-tac-toe with the demonic force of alcoholism, playing tic-tac-toe with the crap demon, playing tic-tac-toe with lust and pornography, uh, demonic spirits pulling all, all, all over your body, jerking you around, swing you over here and swing you over there and you go everywhere they swing you. Stay away. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impotent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me this day, have I paid my vows? Therefore come I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works and fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Let me stop there. Pat, Pat's two cents. There is no way Satan can entice you with something that's ugly, that's funky, that stinks, that is repulsive. What do you think he's going to entice you with? What he knows you find attractive. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. You know, a lot of times you think because you can't see God, God ain't around. Pat's two cents. God is right there, baby. He knows your every thought, your every feeling, your every mood, every word, every act. He's all-knowing. He's everywhere. He's all powerful. Don't play him. <laughs> yeah, don't play him cheap, baby. He'll surprise you. <clears throat> yeah, the good man's not home, all right. Okay, verse 20. He has taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. Yeah, so with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield with the flattering of her lips. She forced him. He goeth after her straightway as an ox, goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. Till a dart strike through his liver as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. They ain't playing. Pat's two cents. Those demonic forces out there, they're not playing with you, baby. It may look like tic-tac-toe. It may look like you playing checkers. It may look harmless and seem like, what's the big deal? Oh, there's a big deal, baby, because there is always a stinger waiting to strike you. Strike you dead. That may not be overnight. That's the part that fools you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna finish it off because the warning is still going on. Verse 24, hearken unto me now, therefore, ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths, for she has cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. I told you it's an allegory. When I talk my one little woman here, 
all of the powers of darkness, of enticements, of lust, of seduction, of, of magnetism, drawing you through your own appetites and your sick weaknesses and all of that. And, and, and it's all about pulling you down. That's why some men lose homes. They lose cars. They lose their families because they get so caught up in the addictions. They are out of control. Totally out of control. How far are you willing to go? How far down are you willing to sink? Before you wake up and smell the coffee, baby, while you still got a life to wake up to. That's your warning. Go to God while you can. Seek him while he may be found.